Hi, so my name is James Armstrong. I've been working for NATO in Afghanistan for about uh, 10 years. I should say, say before I start that my comments did not reflect NATO policy on that. <laughs> so I want to take you into a dystopian vision of the future, Britain in 2026. A bitter insurgency across the country. US forces as part of an international coalition have been deployed across the country and in a forward oper operating base Forsetshire and Re Regional Command Felpisham, the 82nd Airborne Division have received reports of insurgent activity in a small settlement called Ambridge, which is about six weeks to the uh, You can see on the map that there's been a number of ID strikes around Ambridge and there are reports of guerrilla fighters uh, based up there in the Hassock Hills. <laughs> so how likely is this scenario? Well, <laughs> So, in the event of an emergency in the, in the UK, there's actually a fair chance that Ambridge would be the site of uh, significant insurgent activity. Insurgencies over history have been predominantly rural based. As Mao Zedong articulated, you need to uh, revolutionise the, pe the peasant pro proletariat. Uh, we've seen uh, rural insurgencies uh, across the world, Afga Afghanistan being the latest one. And uh, there are a number of key factors that, in Ambridge that make it actually a benign environment for an insurgent movement. You've got the rugged terrain, you've got the rugged terrain in the uh, Hatter Hills, which could provide a sanctuary for insurgents. Uh, you've got a fairly weak... And there's a very weak infrastructure as well, which means that the government uh, can't, can't really establish a long-term presence. So it's also, if you look at the map down here, uh, Forsetshire itself is a potential staging area for high pressure attacks in major cities such as London, Oxford, and Birmingham. <laughs> so, the US Counterinsurgency Manual 2014 identifies five forces of insurgency. I think we can, in, in terms of Ambridge, I think we can dismiss the first three religion, national, and ethnicity. There are no indications that that is the case in Ambridge. But I think in, uh, in the final two, I think there's more grounds uh, for. for for suggesting that those might be causes of insurgent activity in Ambridge. You've got significant economic world differentials, the Aldridge's versus the Carters, you've got inequalities in land ownership and limited employment prospects. You've also got uh, indications of corruption. Uh, we've seen forced to land interference in the local government. So who would our insurgents be? Well, I spent, I, 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 I spent a happy afternoon in Kabul trying to identify potential... So, uh, the, the US counterinsurgency doctrine identifies four main groups of insurgents, uh, four main groups within an insurgent network. Uh, first of all, the leadership. There's a fair chance this wouldn't be based in Ambridge. It's likely to be based outside uh, Ambridge, uh, potentially in a much more isolated location, uh, in Perth, impervious to drone strikes. But you would have, a no I, I think there's a fair chance that you would have a number of potential guerrilla fighters in Ambridge. Uh, the profile of these tends to be young men with poor employment prospects, Jazza McCleary, Jamie Perks, Ed Grundy. But I think as well, I did, it didn't occur to me while I was writing this, uh, but I think there's a fair chance that Emma could be a particularly uh, successful uh, guerrilla fighter. Supporting the you have an auxiliary network, uh, which is, tends to be made up of uh, disenfranchised clan or tribal networks, the Carters and the Horribans potentially provide providing auxiliary support. Uh, you also uh, tend to find the underground network, a, a close nexus between uh, an insurgent network and uh, underground illegal activity. So potentially the Grundy network, uh, their criminal activities could be financing uh, insurgents in, uh, in Africa. So historically, uh, uh, The solution to insurgency is tends to tend to be very security focused. So, in the past, the population of Ambridge would probably be relocated to a secure uh, village uh, in order to monitor their activities. But this, uh, particularly with Vietnam, this uh, the, this uh, uh, doctrine was dis discredited, and a more comprehensive approach was uh, uh, was formulated, uh, which, tenet, which is based around four, uh, which is based around. around four main lines of effort. So first of all you have to shape, uh, where you're looking at trying to shape the environment uh, through psychological operations, uh, through engaging uh, through, through engaging potential human intelligence sources. Then you have the clear phase, which is the more traditional security focused phase, 
where you're trying to eliminate or reintegrate potential gorilla fighters. Ed Grundy would probably be groomed at some point. <laughs> <laughs> then finally, once you've cleared the area, you would have the whole phase, and uh, the, the international forces would, would, would withdraw, and you, uh, the host nation forces uh, would establish a presence in the area. So potentially Lieutenant uh, Hedden Lloyd and B.C. Harrison Burns uh, would be mobilised to secure the local population. <laughs> and finally, the build phase, this is where we address the root causes. So potentially uh, you could have the government uh, uh, diversifying village council representation to uh, uh, to enfranchise uh, disaffected guerrilla fighters and an land reform, especially uh, the breakup of uh, Orsicha land. <laughs> but but throughout this, uh, but uh, U.S. counterinsurgency doctrine emphasizes throughout the need for a population centric approach, particularly understanding the informal systems of political influence. And this word informal is key because in Afghanistan, what I've seen tend to happen is people focus on the formal power brokers. So in the case of Ambridge, they'd be engaging people like Brian, Neil, Alan, and they'd also be uh, engaging the formal communications network. And unfortunately, in Afghanistan, I think in Ambridge, this would do nothing to address the situation. <laughs> <laughs> engaging someone like Brian, whose activities in Borsuch land potentially represent a, a, a root cause of the insurgency. And I would recommend uh, uh, US, U.S. forces in Ambridge looking at the work of Nicola he Headlam and her work on, <laughs> informal, on, in, on engaging informal uh, power brokers such as Kenny and Neil and informal communication networks. And Ed Grundy, king of Ambridge! <laughs> <laughs> so what was the point of all this? Uh, well, I, think there, I think there are potentially lessons that could be learned from Ambridge and could be applied uh, to uh, to uh, campus safety training in the future. Uh, the photo below is from uh, a simulated Afghan village in Norfolk. Uh, it was very effective as a uh, as a training simulation, and the problem was it prioritised uh, the uh, the physical aspects of village life without necessarily engaging the info uh, without necessarily providing training on informal networks and uh, the need to engage the local population. Uh, and understand them uh, using potentially uh, the informal networking techniques developed by Nicola Heaven. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>